So in today's lesson, we're going to talk about a new concept, and that is the quadratic formula. So um, you may have thought about this already, but there are some quadratic functions that are not actually factorable. So let's think about the strategies we've used so far in order to solve uh, by using factoring. We would, to factor this polynomial right here, I would be looking for two numbers that will multiply to give me one and add to give me three. And so I can tell right off the bat that I am not gonna be able to factor this. Yet an interesting thing happens when I go on Desmos and I go ahead and graph this function. I notice right away that it does have a solution. And so what am I looking for when I'm looking for a solution to a quadratic equation? Well, if I plot it as a function, what I'm really looking for are the zeros or the roots here. And so I can see very clearly that when I plot this function on Desmos, it does have a solution. So that is an interesting situation for us to be in, right? And so I think you can also imagine that um, you might also have quadratic functions that are poss might possibly have coefficients that are not nice whole friendly numbers. And so there are cases where um, simply factoring will not work or it's not the most efficient method. So for that reason, a quadratic formula, a formula was developed to allow us to solve quadratic equations in a different way. Now in some years, I've gone through the whole process of deriving the quadratic formula, but I'm not gonna go through that now because you know we're a little bit pressed for time. Uh, I'll see if I can maybe seek out a, um, a video for you to watch so that you can see how it's done. Uh, but the quadratic formula is a, a nice tool to use when factoring is not possible, or sometimes I'm gonna say, or difficult, right? Um, I know that when the coefficients of your, uh, of your terms in the quadratic formula, or in the quadratic equation are really large, and sometimes finding the factors is a bit tricky or super time consuming. So um, the quadratic formula may be a better solution. So the, here are the details. Now this may seem like a lot, so I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video, take a look at what's going on here, and then resume when you're ready. So what I'm hoping you noticed is that we're talking about, in order to use the quadratic formula, the quadratic equation has to be in standard form. Okay, it cannot be in factored form. If it were in factored form, we'd probably just solve using factors. It cannot be in vertex form. And if it is in any other form but standard form, it needs to first be converted into that form. So for instance, things we need to watch for, we need to make sure that we have our terms going in descending order of degree. So our squared term would go first, our linear or term would go second, and then our constant term last. And then the other side of the equation, as we saw when we were solving by factoring, should always be zero. Okay. Now, so when our quadratic formula is in, or our quadratic equation is in this form, we say that the quadratic formula to solve for x is this big thing. Now you'll notice that in standard form, we have the coefficient of my, our squared term as a, coefficient of our linear term is b, and, the coef, and, and our constant term is c. So all we're doing is substituting the coefficients for those terms into the quadratic formula as they appear. So for instance, this b that appears here and here is really just the coefficient on our linear term, on our x term. When we look at this a right here in the formula, well we just retrieve the value from the coefficient of our squared term, and that appears twice. And then lastly, our constant term c appears as well. So all we're really doing is just substituting a, 
b, and c from our quadratic equation in standard form into this formula that's developed. Okay, so it reads as x is equal to negative b plus or minus, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over, which meaning all divided by 2a. Um, and so there we have it. That is the quadratic formula. Now, I want to talk really briefly about this business of plus or minus. So I'm going to just talk about that in two different ways. First of all, you'll notice that um, I'm just going to pull up a different screen here. So let me expand just really briefly. I want to really briefly expand on this business of the plus minus. Now you'll notice that the plus minus comes in advance of this square root, right? And so what I, one of the reasons that that's there is because we need to remember that anytime we're taking the square root of a value, right? So for example, the square root of nine, we need to remember that there are actually two different possibilities there. We know that the square root of a value should be both the positive and the negative version of that. So for example, I know that, yes, the square root of 9, one possible answer is 3. Why? Because 3 times 3 gives me 9. But we also need to remember that there's another possibility. There's the negative result there. So negative 3 times negative 3 will also give us 9. Right? So that plus minus just refers to the fact that there are two possibilities, the positive and the negative result, that can happen when we take the square root. Now that's the first part. Now the second part that I want to, you to understand is, well, how do we work that out once we've plugged in or substituted A, B, and C into this formula? How do we deal with that? So I'm going to talk about that right now. So here we go. So when we're substituting this in, all this really means in the same way that when we were, um, we were figuring out our roots, I know that there would be the x being equal to negative v plus all this square root business. But also there's another solution. The other solution is that negative b minus the b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? So I have the plus version and I also have the minus version there. And that really should make sense. It should make sense in a lot of cases that you're going to end up with two different solutions. And why might that be? Well, remember that what you're finding when you're solving for x, well, what are you finding? You are finding the roots of that parabola, right? Or the zeros, which are in fact the x-intercepts. So in a lot of cases, you're going to see that there are in fact two values for that solution, right? So not unexpected. Now, I want to talk about um, a different possibility because we know also that um, we can have our parabola just kissing that x-axis, in which case we're going to end up with two identical roots. And in that case, what we see, uh, we're going to see something a little bit different. And you're going to have an assignment on that, and I'm going to leave it for that. We also have the situation where a parabola might not touch the curve at all, in which case there is no solution for x, and we're going to look for that in some of the work that we do today. So back to the original note, I'm going to suggest to you that you have this formula written down somewhere close by so that you can utilize it as need be as we're working through our uh, through the examples that I'm about to provide and um, and it'll help you kind of navigate that. So I've chosen this example very carefully because there's something I'm hoping to demonstrate once we've solved it using the quadratic formula. So I would say to you, one important exercise at the onset of this may be for you to go ahead and identify A, B, and C for yourselves and to write those out as a separate piece. 
right? That may be useful to you, and I'm going to certainly do that for you right now. Um, so I can see here that the value of a is negative 5, the value of b is positive 8, and the value of c is negative 3. And pay, pay, pay really close attention to the sign of the term because, of course, that will have an effect on the um, accuracy of your solution. So now that I know the value of a, b, and c, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to substitute that into my quadratic formula. So I know that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And so now I'm just, I'm ready to go ahead and to substitute the values for a, b, and c into my quadratic uh, formula. So negative b, so negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared minus 4 times negative 5 times negative 3. And all of it, not just the square root, but all of it is going to be divided by 2 times whatever a is, and a is negative 5. Now I'm going to stop right here for a minute and point out where some common errors occur when utilizing the quadratic formula. And one of them often occurs in this business of the minus 4ac. You know, notice that both a and c are negative in this case, and the formula itself is a has a subtraction in it. So we need to be really careful when we're multiplying those integers to make sure that that portion will have the correct sign, be it positive or negative. So that is one piece. I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up a little bit, just simplify it. Uh, negative 8 plus or minus, and you can take this down to as many steps as you feel comfortable with. Um, uh, of course, I'd rather you write more steps to show more of your work, just in case um, you're you know, prone to making algebraic mistakes. However, if you're comfortable with it, go ahead, um, <clears throat> go ahead and skip steps as you see fit. So 8 squared is going to give me 64. I'm just going to look over here and multiply these out. So negative 4 times negative 5 gives me positive 20. Positive 20 times negative 3 gives me negative 60. So I'm going to go ahead and put in negative 60 here. And then all divided by uh, 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10. Uh, all right, so now again, you, hopefully you can see that the, what I have under the square root here can be simplified further, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So negative 8 plus or minus the square root of 4 over negative 10. Uh, so, uh, you know, and, and at this point, I want to look really carefully at what I have underneath the root sign, and this is actually um, a question where the solution is pretty nice and friendly, so that is nice. I'm going to continue on with that. Just make this a little bit smaller. Move it over. Uh, Alright, so carrying on, I have that I have two possibilities for x. And I'm going to go right ahead and jump into those two possibilities. I know x can be negative 8 plus... The square root of 4, well, what is the square root of 4? It's 2 divided by negative 10, which when I work that out is going to give me uh, negative 6 over negative 10, which, of course, simplifies when I, um, you know, cancel out those negatives, and then I reduce my fraction 3 fifths. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to solve for my other version, which is negative 8, and now I'm going to look at the... I looked at the positive version, now I'm going to look at the negative version, so, oops, so the positive, now I've got my negative version, 2 over negative 10, and that, of course, negative 10 over negative 10 will give me positive 1. So here I have two values for my roots, and they don't look too bad. Now, you'll remember at the beginning when we first started this that I said to you that I chose this question very carefully um, and with a particular intention. I want to show you something now. So, I would say to you, 
you'll hopefully have seen that this took a lot of space and a lot of time and there were many, many opportunities where I could have made a calculation mistake throughout of all of this. So I'm going to suggest to you that you should always look to see if your quadratic equation is factorable because often if it's factorable then you'll be able to find the solution much more rapidly and with fewer possibilities of going wrong and making mistakes. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if I were factoring this right here, I would be looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to give me what? Well, the product of my first and last term is 15. And I'm looking for two numbers that are going to multiply to give me 8. In, or add rather to give me 8 and so I can see that those numbers are actually really easy to find oh, oops 3 and 5 I just got ahead of myself um, 3 and 5 and so you know getting the factors is easy which means factoring it is reasonably quick and probably more efficient than using the quadratic formula so although many people are, are super happy to see the quadratic formula they think wow this is a solution I don't need to factor you need to be careful because the quadratic formula sometimes is not the most efficient or appropriate tool for you. Just some food for thought. Okay, so um, here's a second example for you. I'm going, I want you to give this a try on your own. I want you to uh, work up to the point where you've substituted all of the values into the quadratic formula and, and then we'll stop and I'm going to show you a few things. Okay, so when I look at this, I can quickly see that the values for A, B, and C are as such. So the coefficient of my squared term here is a 1. The coefficient of my linear term is a 3. So the value, value of B is 3. And the coefficient of my constant term is just, it's not a coefficient, it's just a value. Um, is one as well. So I'm ready now to go ahead and substitute those values into my quadratic formula. Okay, so x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's see how you did with the substitution. So x is going to be equal to negative b. Now, uh, if b, and this question often arises, if b were already negative, then I would be saying, well, it's the negative of whatever b is. And so, you know, a negative and another negative would give me a positive. But maybe we'll see an example like that. In this case, b is positive. So I would say it's negative of whatever b is. So negative of whatever b is, b is 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 all over 2 times 1. So how did you do? Hopefully you did okay. Uh, I'm gonna just clean things up here. So this is the point where I'm hoping you've rejoined, checked your answer, and you've done reasonably well. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, carry on to simplify. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, well, 3 squared is 9, minus 4 times 1 times 1 is just 4, all over 2. Uh, Alright, so negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 5, all over 2. We're just about done here. So now I want to talk to you about something that is worth considering. So most students will ask me the question, well, what do I do? Do I just plug the square root of 5 into my calculator? There's no nice, clean square root for 5. And do I write my answer as a decimal? Well, I'm going to say to you that it really depends on the circumstance. If it's a straight-up you know, situation where you're asked to solve the quadratic um, equation to find the value of x, then you have an exact answer here by leaving it in the square root. Um, as a you know, not so dissimilarly to how we represent uh, responses in fraction form. However, I would say that if you're looking at a word problem where the value of your solution has real meaning, then you may wish 
to actually evaluate this and end up with an answer that is a decimal and then round as you see fit for the context of the problem. But in the case where it's simply an algebraic exercise, then what you want to do is you want to leave that uh, that five under the root. So let me just um, make this a little bit smaller and we'll just finish out our solution here. So I would say we would write this as therefore the roots are x is equal to negative three plus root five over two and x is equal to negative three minus root five over two. So again we have two different solutions. I think if you went ahead and you um, evaluated this, you'd see that the values that you get for x are lengthy decimals, uh, and so this was not able to be factored, and so using a quadratic formula was probably the right choice here. Um, and so another thing that I want to mention to you is uh, that sometimes you end up with something that can be reduced to lowest terms. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say, for instance, that this had had a 2 in front of it, and this instead had been a 6. Then I know that 6 can be divided by 2, and I know that 2 can be divided by 2, so there's an opportunity to reduce there. Uh, it doesn't happen very frequently at the grade 10 level, but just in case you see that, um, that may occur when you're looking comparing your answers to the answers that, are, um, that you've received when you've just used the quadratic formula. Okay, so here's one last example for us, um, and I've intentionally not used an example where the equation given is in standard form. You'll notice, hopefully, that the example shows our quadratic equation, our quadratic function, rather, in vertex form. And so we can't find the roots that way very easily and so what we need to do is we need to expand. So first off what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the y with a 0 because of course finding the solution to the quadratic equation means finding the zeros or the roots. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to expand this x minus 2 all squared to be a binomial times a binomial. Now, this is where I often see another mistake because students feel like they can go ahead and distribute this square to each of the terms, but that is not how exponents work, right? So when I write x minus 2 all squared, just in the same way that I would, if I had anything else squared, I would be looking at the base multiplied by itself. So then what do I need to do here to simplify? I need to FOIL. So I'm going to use my FOIL method first outside inside last so x x times x is going to give me x squared I'm going to go my outside terms so x times negative 2 is going to give me negative 2x now I'm going to use my insides negative 2x is what I get there as well and then finally my last term, so negative 2 times negative 2. And beware of the signs there, so that's going to give me a positive 4. But then don't forget that I also have this plus 3, and I just need to add that in to the end here. So now I'm going to simplify. So I should get x squared minus 4x plus 7. And now, again, you know, these are look like they might be nice, friendly numbers. It may be worth our while to see if we can factor this instead of using the quadratic formula, because that tends to be quicker more often than not. So let's just give this a go to see. So I'd be looking for two numbers that can multiply to give me 7, but add to give me negative 4. Well, I know that 7 is a prime number, and the only way that I'm getting 7 is 1 and 7, or the, you know, negative versions of that. Uh, but that won't give me a negative 4, so factoring is out, folks, unfortunately. And so we need to go ahead and solve using the quadratic formula. Um, so what I want you to do right now is I'd like you to take the values of a, b, and c and substitute those into the quadratic formula to see if we, uh, to see if we can solve this using that. And, uh, and stop after you've substituted and simplified, and we'll take a look at the answer and interpret its meaning.
Okay, let's see how you did. So x in this case is equal to negative of whatever b is. But b in this circumstance is actually already a negative number. So I'm really saying negative, negative 4, which really just changes the sign of my b. Plus or minus square root of negative 4 all squared minus 4 times 1 times 7. And all of that is going to be divided by 2 times whatever a is, which is 1. So now I'm going to simplify this. Let me just make it a tiny bit smaller so I can fit in some more writing here. There we go. Okay, so x is going to be equal to, well, negative negative 4 is going to give me positive 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 4 squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 gives me positive 16. Uh, now let's look at the second part. So negative 4 times 1 is negative 4 times 7 will give me negative 28 all over 2. So now let me just simplify this. So an interesting thing happen when I try to simplify this. I end up with x is equal to 4 plus or minus the square root and I can see very quickly here that this is going to give me a negative number. I end up with a negative 12 under the root divided by 2. And I dare you to go ahead and type in in your calculator negative 12 and then take the square root of that because what you will see is a big fat error because we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So what does this mean? This means for us that there is therefore no real roots. In other words, there is no solution. So what we've stumbled upon is actually the situation where um, what we have is a parabola that is not touching or crossing our x-axis, right? And we can actually tell that if we, you know, really thought about it. I can see from my original equation that my vertex is going to be at 2 and 3, right? So 2 and 3 would put it about here, just sketching this out. And I can also see that the value of a is positive, which means that this is a parabola opening upward. So the fact that I have no real roots is not um, really surprising because there's no opportunity for my parabola for this function to be crossing the x-axis and, uh, and for there to be zeros. Okay, so I, I hope I've given you a few different types of scenarios where you have um, different situations that you encounter. Uh, what I'm going to give you tomorrow are some practice problems so that you can work through solving using the quadratic formula. And uh, as always, reach out with any questions you might have.